folks, that my initiative, School Choice is the Black Choice, and what we've been doing is going around the country talking to African Americans who are running charter schools. This is a part of an effort with my wife's foundation, uh, Jay Hood and Associates, and the Walton Family Foundation. And why, why is this important? Because this is about showing us controlling our own education, plus controlling the economics of our education. So we took our cameras to the Bronx to talk to Dr. Charlene Reed, who's doing amazing things there with poor children. Here we go. School Choice is the Black Choice also highlights outstanding charter schools and the men and women who run them. This week, we travel to the Bronx in New York City and meet one of these extraordinary sisters who are dedicated to changing the lives of our kids and our community. Today's School Choice All-Star is the Bronx Charter School for Excellence and its CEO, Dr. Charlene Reed. Dr. Reed runs the Excellence Community Schools Charter Management Organization. Now in its 13th year, they serve nearly 1,500 students in five schools in New York and Connecticut. One of the most important advantages public charter schools have over traditional public schools is their ability to reflect the exceptional nature of their African American leadership. Dr. Reed is a former UCLA track star and her will to win still informs her leadership style today. The goal was always very clear. You need to win. There's no tie. There's no, oh, we did a good job. It was the effort. No, it was, you, you need to win. Winning for a public school is that the kids are gonna graduate and go to the best high schools in the college. That is the win. Anything else is a loss. Like we high five each other when a kid gets into the best high school. And if someone doesn't get into the, the high school that we want them to get into, we're like, oh, come on, we gotta fix this. What else can we do? How can we make it better? What did we mess up on that kid? Like literally, we have so much data on children that we go back and say, where did we mess up with this kid to where they got into this school when they should have gotten into this school? And then we're able to target like, wow, sixth grade, look what they were doing in math and we didn't catch this. We, this kid slipped through the cracks. Something, something happened here. And then you see what happened in seventh grade and eighth grade and well, look at his score. So that's why he couldn't get into that school. So we have to make sure that that doesn't happen again. But that all happens when you want to win and you feel like you're part of a team and you don't like losing. I hate losing. I, I, and, and I take it so very personal. The levers that I push the most to get the school to this national blue ribbon model was this idea of care, but putting the care into action. So if you really care about someone and you care about their education, you're going to prove it through actually teaching them. So what does that look like for a kindergarten teacher? You're going to set your goal that the kindergartners by the end of the year are going to read. And by any means necessary, you're going to do everything you can to make sure that they learn how to read. And so this, this level of persistence, care, um, you just don't give up. My name is Gregory Jones, Jr. I have three children in the school. Um, one in the sixth grade, one in the third, and uh, my daughter is in kindergarten. The teachers are hands-on. Um, I think all teachers care. Um, these teachers here, um, they care a tad bit more, I would say, because they're more, um, they talk to your kids and they call you and they speak to you in front of your child solo. They send you text messages, emails. So it's, it's, it's more of a, a friendship relationship than it is a teacher and parent relationship. The families and the students know that they have they are held successful and that they cannot fail. Even though they're going to fail, they're going to make mistakes, but it's all about you learn how to make mistakes and you learn how to have successes and that's what life is all about. So what we're modeling here is life. My name is Brandon Johnson. I went to Bronx Charter School for Excellence from kindergarten to eighth grade. And once I graduated, I went to Mount St. Michael Academy, which is on my pen. And I'm attending St. John's University to study business and administration. Every teacher, at the end of the day, they want, they want you to work hard because it's their job to make you want to do the best that you can. So one thing I always knew was that they wanted me to get 100 on my test because they, they needed me to, you know? So it was never a question whether they wanted me to be successful. I knew they wanted me to be successful. Some teachers showed in different ways. Some teachers were like playful, laid back. And some teachers are really on my back all the time. And I'm like, oh man, I don't really like that. But the teachers, it's interesting that the teachers that you don't like the most are the teachers that you appreciate the most in the end. 
Another crucial advantage for a public charter school is the ability of its leaders to use their knowledge and experience and creativity to fix what they see as broken. That is not always true in traditional public school systems. When I worked in the traditional school district as a, um, a teacher and as a, a leader, um, I was part of a system that I felt like rewarded bad behavior. I felt like that's what I was in, I was a part of. A lot of apathy, a lot of, you know, the kids are poor, the kids, the neighborhood is violent. All the things that can uh, plague uh, an urban city district or, uh, you know, a low income neighborhood. But at no point did I feel like, and, and it's not everyone, you know, but ultimately it's enough to where you just can't take it anymore. And so for me, coming to a space where I could control for um, responsibility and accountability was huge for me because I wanted to be able to kind of figure out a way to make an urban public school work. And I made that decision after trying really hard in a traditional school district and was met with so many different obstacles and things getting, getting in the way of student learning that I said, if I can control some of these obstacles or these levers, then I think I actually can get an urban public school to work. So by the time I got to a charter school, I was like, every morning we're going to have a sacred reading block. This is going to be the core of what we do. Nothing's ever going to get in the way of this reading block. And it's worked. And I tried to do it in another environment, and, it, and I couldn't because I couldn't command that amount of time. Like what I needed was a, 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 an uninterrupted block of about uh, 90 minutes to, to, to two hours every day of literacy instruction for this to work. And so um, that's like the largest, I mean, that's to me, I, you know, I'll always be in this setting at least in the near future because I have that freedom to be able to control literacy instruction. This is a personal investment for all of us. I treat the children here as if they're my own children. Um, and when you do that, you're gonna fight for them tooth and nail. When you treat them as other people's children, you don't fight for them. You're, you're, you have conditions when it's other people's kids. You don't have any conditions when it's your, your own children. And so I think parents walk away knowing that there are no conditions for the way that I care and love, love your child. This laser-like focus on the child is the hallmark of any successful school, and it is what drives the best public charter schools. Dr. Charlene Reed and the Excellence Community Schools Charter Management Organization are school choice all-stars, fostering innovation, taking responsibility, demanding accountability, and winning for our children and our community. I'm Roland Martin. And I make it clear, it's all about black empowerment. Sure Panel, real quick. Oh, no. I mean, there it is again, brother. Like I said, whatever works. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. uh, can our kids get educated? That's all, I mean, that's all I want to know. Whatever works. Full support of school choice and voucher programs. It works. And, uh, well, well it, it, no, it works when it works. When it works. Right. But there are, some <laughs> there are some people who are doing the wrong thing who need to be called out, Spencer. Yeah. Uh, results matter. All right, even uh, traditional schools, same way. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us, he wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.